Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. It's time for another episode of Game of Thrones. Tonight I'm going to be watching episode 1 from season 3. Seems like things really started to ramp up at the end of season 2, with the epic battle of Blackwater in episode 9, which I've been told in the comments a couple of times that episode 9 of each season is going to be pretty much an epic episode. And that was mentioned in the Season 1, Episode 9 comments. So I kind of anticipated that for the previous season, Season 2. Though I didn't know just how epic that episode would be. With Tyrion becoming the hero of the battle, essentially saving the city, even though without Tywin they probably would not have won the day. But Tyrion led the way, and the men that were involved in that battle know this. And they also know that King Joffrey was the coward that ran off the field because his mother told him to get inside. One of the loose ends that didn't get tied up in the previous season is what happened to Theon. We saw that he was knocked out by his own men, a sack was thrown over his head, but they never let us know what happened to him. And of course there's the story of the dragons which has been going on since the first season. I would expect that in this season they're going to be a little more grown, it looks like Daenerys is going to have some kind of control over them or some kind of influence over them. So it's going to be interesting to see how that story develops and how the dragons develop and the relationship with Daenerys, how that develops. So we have a lot of stories to catch up on here in Season 3. Now before I get started, let me ask you to please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that when I upload these new episodes, you'll be notified. And also please comment down below and let me know your insights into this episode. So let's get started with Season 3. Well, I hear the dragons. At least it sounded like the dragons. Oh no, that was the, the White Walker, I guess. So if that White Walker turned and saw him as it appeared at the end of the season, why didn't it kill him? Who's this coming up behind him? So who set him on fire? Ah, okay. Did you send the ravens? Charlie, look at me. Did you send the ravens? That was your job. Your only job. Well, that's a very good opening for the season. So are there any new areas of the map that we're going to see in this season?
Well, that looks like a new area. I don't recognize it. What was the name of this area? How often do they introduce new areas on the map? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> That's a big man. That's a real big man. <laughs> First time you've seen a giant, John Snow. <laughs> I don't say too long, they're shy. Listen, Anna Crow. We killed his friends. And we want to question this one. What do we want with the baby Crow? His baby killed Coronathan. He wants to be one of us. Did he say he wanted to be one of them? That half handed cunt killed the friends of mine. Friends are twice your size. Father told me big men fall just as quick as little ones. If you put a sword through their hearts. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my colors, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. And to teach me humility, the gods have condemned me to watch you waddle about, wearing that proud lion that was my father's sigil and his father's before him. But neither gods nor men will ever compel me to let you turn castily rock into your whorehouse. Go now. Speak no more of your rights to castily rock. Go. Well, he's not being treated as the conquering hero. Like I thought he might. Now one more thing. The next four I catch in your bed, I'll hang. Watch out for her. I always do. Watch out for her with him. <laughs> A word of warning against Littlefinger. Too bad someone didn't give Ned a word of warning against him. Oh, the dragons are getting a lot bigger. So they can fish like eagles. And they like their fish cooked. <laughs> Growing fast. Not fast enough. I can't wait that long. I need an army. We'll be an ass to pour by nightfall. Death means nothing to them. He begs you attend to this carefully, Your Grace. So he's going to give a demonstration. Tell the good master. There is no need. My master points out that men don't need nipples. We'll be fair to them. We won't mutilate them to make a point. Hmm. So who is this that's following them? You'll see they're properly fed, sheltered. And a great injustice has been done to them. Closing your eyes will not undo it.
<laughs> Not what I expected from a little girl. Of course, that wasn't really a little girl, was it? Ah, the warlocks. I owe you my life, sir. The honor is mine. Mike Reed. You know this man? I know him. He was one of the greatest fighters the Seven Kingdoms has ever seen. And as the Lord Commander of Robert Baratheon's Kingsguard. King Robert is dead. I've been searching for you, Daenerys Stormborn, to ask your forgiveness. I was sworn to protect your family. I failed them. I am Barrison Selby, King's Guard to your father. Allow me to join your Queen's Guard, and I will not fail you again. Well, she's gathering her army one person at a time, I guess. Okay, so that was a good start for Season 3. I was hoping to get a little bit of Theon's story and find out what's going on with Arya, but they have so many different storylines going on in this series that they can't really touch on each story in every episode. The more that I see of Cersei interacting with Joffrey, or those around Joffrey, or while she is around Joffrey, the looks on her face make me think that she has a good deal of contempt for him. Like he's a necessary evil, that he has the power of the throne in which she can stand behind him and control things. But if she had her way, it wouldn't necessarily be him on the throne. And with Tyrion, I didn't really expect that he would be treated as a conquering hero. I thought he might get that treatment from some. But I knew as far as the king was concerned, and as far as Cersei was concerned, he was never going to get that kind of treatment, regardless of what he did in order to save the city from defeat. After his father's reaction to him, and the things that his father said to him, and what he told him, kind of makes me wonder now, if, is Tyrion going to turn against his family in some way? He seems to show a, a good deal of respect for the Starks. He did in Winterfell in the first season, and he has done so in the second season with Sansa in King's Landing. So that being the case, I would think that that's one direction he could turn if the Starks would trust him and not try to have him executed as, as the person who tried to kill Bran. Of course, we know that he wasn't involved in that, at least I believe he was not involved in that. I believe that was Jamie's doing. So like I said, this was a really good start to this season, and I'm really looking forward to digging deeper into it. So subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload each episode. And please leave any comments down below. I'm interested in your insights into this episode, but please don't leave any spoilers, of course, because I want to take it as it comes at me. So I'll see you on the next episode.